From Trick or Treat to Shock 'em Dead to Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, the past is littered with fun and cheesy rock and roll horror movies. Sadly, video game companies have largely steered clear of this subgenre, choosing instead to give us zombie filled mansions and first person spook fests. But back in the 1990s, there was one game that dared to buck that trend and play some killer riffs. Now I'm talking about Mr. Bones by Zono Incorporated and Sega, which took our skeleton hero on an adventure to outshred a full motion video vampire. Yeah, you might want to turn back now if you don't want to know what happens next, because today we're going to spoil the story and ending for Mr. Bones on the Sega Saturn. This is Game Over, the early years. Released about a month before Halloween 1996, critics weren't exactly sure what to make of Mr. Bones. GamePro complained about the slow gameplay and simplistic action, while Electronic Gaming Monthly gave it strong scores, but said that it's the strangest game to cross the review crew's critical eye. Looking back on the game now, it's easy to see why the constant genre shifts and paranormal love story were baffling to people that were used to video games fitting into a tiny, easily definable box. In that sense, Mr. Bones is definitely rock and roll. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this game is because of the cinemas, which were all fantastic. A lot of it comes down to getting quality people to not only write the music, but also play the parts. A good example of that is Fitz Houston, a prolific character actor who has been on everything from Brooklyn Nine-Nine to Malcolm in the Middle to Seinfeld. He's also a writer, musician, preacher, and yes, even a YouTuber. The point is, they got the right guy for the job, as I think you'll hear from one of the best opening cinemas found on any 32-bit console. What's going on? Oh, I see. 
Nice talking to you. Somebody's messing with something he shouldn't be messing with. Now we're living proof of that. Undead proof anyway. I get personal now. You will be dissolved. Uh oh. So, as you can see, this is the story of a vampire philosopher named Dagulian has found a way to raise the dead and create an army of skeletons in the hope of laying waste to the world. There's just one problem, and his name is Mr. Bones, a blue-eyed skeleton who has a mind of his own. He may be a little confused why everybody's marching up to the castle on the hill, but at least he has the good sense to run away when all the red-eyed skeletons start chasing after him. His immediate plan is to find a way to the top of the mausoleum. That way, he can take on the brainwashed opponents one at a time. This works, allowing our hero to explore the valley in relative peace. I mean, he still has to deal with half-buried skeletons, but at least the angry mob isn't still chasing him. It's here in the valley where he finds a ghostly pit stop with an unexpected rock and roll cameo. That's right, it's here where Mr. Bones learns to shred. as a wet sheet in a cold snap. You better face facts, Mr. Bones. They ain't gonna leave you alone. Some red-eyed devil's gonna make his bones tonight. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should just let him. What's that sound? Yeah, maybe there's a hotel I could hole up in. Some gingerbread house bed breakfast skeleton hotel. I don't know this place, but I know that sound. But how do I know? Is someone out there? Who are you? What do you want? No, I know someone's out there. Either come inside or be on your way. How does that thing do that? It would make that pretty noise. What, have you been dead for 50 years? It's called a guitar, son. Why don't you try one on for size? about it. Just play it. How about that? 
one chord, and I wigged him. <laughs> uh, now, y'all can't talk, but you can listen, and maybe even feel. With a six string in hand, it's finally time for Mr. Bones to win over the crowd with the righteous riffs he learned from one of the greatest guitarists of all time. That's right, he learned to rock from none other than Ronnie Montrose, the front man of such bands as Montrose and Gamma, who also worked with dozens of the biggest names in rock music. He's also the guitarist who quite literally brought the song Frankenstein to life with Edgar Winter in the early 1970s. Now he's helping another misunderstood monster find fans in Mr. Bones. And as you can see, the skeleton crowd is eating it up. The good news is that the Army of Darkness is no longer after our hero. Unfortunately, the bad news is that the crows were not swayed by Mr. Bones' hot guitar licks because they end up swooping down and stealing his arms and legs. Now he's forced to bounce around the forest looking to get all of his body parts back, all while avoiding bats and other enemies. This takes uh, most of the day and even involves Mr. Bones running down a mountain while trying to not get squashed by rolling logs. Okay, so it's here where things start to go off the rails. After successfully avoiding the log jam, Bones finds a drum kit of sorts that generates electricity or something. And that's not the only thing it does, because the drumming appears to open up some sort of portal that sucks the skeleton into a different world. It's here where he platforms through space, bounces a small skull on top of his massive skull, and then impresses this ghostly woman with a bluesy rock song about not being able to breathe on the moon. Look, it's one of the highlights of Mr. Bones, but there's no way I'm going to be able to get away with showing it without getting a copyright strike. So you'll just have to take my word for it, I guess. The important part is that it impresses the ghost woman, who takes his guitar and agrees to help him return to Earth in order to defeat the Gullian. Now, she may have agreed to help, but Mr. Bone's skeletal body gets ripped all apart on the portal ride home, which means that he'll need to reattach everything before he makes it back to Earth. And even when he makes it back home, Mr. Bones falls butt first into the river, which carries our hero to a village filled with little people. And I mean, really little people. We're talking a Gulliver's Travel situation here, where these teeny tiny people have captured the waterlogged skeleton and are holding him down. As it turns out, Dagulian has been stealing the tiny people using spiders, and they have understandably confused our hero as a member of the Army of Darkness. He agrees to help him crush the spiders, which sets up this incredible level where Mr. Bones is towering over the village just like it's Godzilla. After saving the tiny hostages, the village leader agrees to help the skeleton get back up to the surface. This involves a humorous scene where they're carrying each of his body parts piece by piece, all while singing a fun song about it, just like one of those old Disney movies. Now they drop him on a frozen lake, which means that he's going to be slipping and sliding his way to the nearby cave. Unfortunately, that's not any safer, as he quickly discovers after getting into a fight with a couple of nasty shadows. And ooh, that's just the opening act, because Mr. Bones will also need to fight a skeletal dragon. Knowing that there's no way to defeat this massive monster, our hero decides to find a way to free the beast from captivity, which gives the dragon a change of heart. In a surprisingly touching screen, the beast apologizes to Mr. Bones and agrees to help him get to Dagulian's castle. This leads to the unlikely team literally flying through a couple of dozen stained glass windows before finding what appears to be the generators responsible for raising the dead. We also locate this menacing skeleton, which will surely put up a massive fight. Or maybe he won't. It's kind of a pushover, actually. Anyway, this leads to a confrontation with the Ghoulian and his vampire's lair. At long last, we finally figure out what his plan was and why Mr. Bones needs to stop him at any cost. <laughs> Hundreds of years 
was to make this night possible. I even prolonged my life with vampire blood. But what have you got for it besides a thousand acres of stony lonesome? A canvas of black. Who'd have thought one little white speck would ruin everything? Me. Red skies ahead now, Mr. Bones. Thank you, ma'am. That's exactly what I need. This sets up the final battle in Mr. Bones, which involves our hero using his guitar to shoot the vampire electricity and deflect enemy shots. Look, it's not the most exciting or visually interesting boss fight you can find on the Saturn, but hey, at least it gives him a reason to rock the guitar one more time. And with all that shredding ruining Dagoulian's awful plans, I can finally say this is what happens next. Gotcha! Oh, now we ain't gonna go through all this again now, are we? What do you expect to extract when you stick a pipe pet into the heart of darkness? Puppy dog tails! Uh, excuse me, but didn't you say you had vampire blood? Shut up! I will tell you to do this and give you the gluttons who eat nothing but gristle! Behind you, man! What's the alternative to evil anyway? Good? Ha! Now, excuse me, but the sun? Show me a good man, and I'll show you a hypocrite! Show me a hypocrite, and I'll show you evil waiting to happen! And I waited long enough! Centuries! The night belongs to me! The night's over, man! Red night has just begun! I hate to break it to you. What? Not much of a listener, was he? Now that is a cute and sweet ending. While I would have preferred another song or two, I really like how the story sets up the ending ahead of time. I like the opposite attract angle with Mr. Bones and his new girlfriend, as well as the non-violent way Dagoulian is dealt with. It doesn't try to build a bigger universe or set up a sequel, instead just focusing on telling a good story with a likable hero. And that's perfect since we never got a sequel. Honestly, I kind of wish more Sega games would have taken this standalone approach. We saw so many of these character-driven platformers auditioning to be the next big series. But this one, well, it just feels complete, and I, I like that. The truth is, Mr. Bones was ahead of its time. It came out at a time when critics and customers felt that games needed to fit in an easily defined box. And as you can see, that's just not what Mr. Bones was all about. 
Thankfully, we started to see that comfort zone get chipped away during the 32-bit era, and then all bets were off once the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and original Xbox were released. Of all the long-forgotten gems from Sega, I would argue that Mr. Bones is the one in most need of a modern remake. Sadly, I doubt Dagoolian has enough vampire blood to bring this Sega classic back from the dead. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Game Over, the early years. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new episodes almost every Monday. Well, except for this week, when it ended up going up on Tuesday. Now, here's the question I have for you. What kind of horror do you want to see more of in video games? I already mentioned the need for more rock and roll horror games, but that's hardly the only subgenre. I don't know, maybe more body horror or found footage or something else. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back tomorrow with a review of Airplane Mode, followed by the thing that was supposed to go up last week but hit a major roadblock. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.